Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Napalm Jed Johnson, and I am joined by Alan Hynek, and we are the advocates for the reigning, defending, undisputed, universal champion of fist pumping, Ricardo Magni. I'm sorry, Ricardo Magni who is unavailable today due to a training session with someone. We don't know who it is exactly, but it sounded pretty darn important. Right, Alan? We did, yeah. Yep, I, I made the assumption that it was that um, one of those, uh, I think it was a, uh, a high school student or something that he'd, he'd been working with, but I'm not, uh, I guess I'm not totally sure. Well, maybe we'll find out about it next week. Right yeah. now, everybody, you're listening to Episode 48. Oh, by the way, that was, Alan, you probably don't know, that was my best Paul Heyman impression advocate for uh, Brock. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't I, know that. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure nobody did. I know my voice didn't sound anything like him. I think I had the cadence down, and I matched the words up pretty well by memory, but I really butchered the pronunciation of the name because usually Paul Heyman says, Brock. Lesnar, like that, and uh, totally, <laughs> totally forgot. Huh. But this is episode 48. We're going to be rattling off lots and lots of feats. I know I have a pretty big list, Alan. You got some, dear? Yeah, I do. Yep, yep. Mine are probably a little bit more, a little bit more recent, but um, okay. well, we've got a we've got a good list. So you guys want to you guys want to listen to this one all the way through because you might hear your name in it. Get your name up in lights a little bit. If you didn't get a chance to listen to episode 47, go ahead and do so. Our main topic was the 4 for February grip competition that took place in February, and it was hosted at Nate Browse's house. Episode 47 was brought to you by our sponsor, Muscle Farm, who has committed to sending out free supplement packages to a lucky winner each week for a few weeks. Winning is easy, guys. It's easy as pie. Do you say easy as pie, Alan, or do you say easy as cake? What do you say? Um, or well, I don't know, anything? actually. I, I guess I don't really go with it. I, I, I probably said easy as pie, but it's been a long time. <laughs> All right. Maybe back when I was a, a little kid. Yeah, uh, well, There's probably, probably more like a swear word involved nowadays. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. That's a good point. Well, anyway, it's easy to win supplements. It's real simple. All you have to do is two things. You like and comment here on the on the YouTube video, right here below, and then second, you go to our Instagram page for North American Grip Sport. It's Grip Sport IG. You follow that page and like the post for today's show. Uh, big thanks to everybody. A big digital high five, virtual fist bump to everybody who hit the like button on last week's video. I saw 26 likes, which is the highest we've had in a while. So please take a minute right now, go down, hit the thumbs up button and like today's video as well. The winner of the drawing for the Muscle Farm Supplements this week, thanks to Brandon Gerber, who was the first to answer my one through eight uh, selection, was Howard Levisky. known Howard a long time through the site. So Howard, please contact me and we'll get everything set up so you can get your prize from Muscle Farm. Uh, thanks for liking everybody. Thanks for commenting. Please do so again because that's how you can win free supplements. And if it does happen to be that it is a person that lives outside the U.S., then I will send something out instead. I'll, I'll have a DVD for you. I just checked the hashtag for uh, This Week in Grip, Alan. People are on the move with that again. Did you see the total? Yeah, it looked like I saw 1,084 was last I checked. That's right, and that's 32 up from last week. I know I put a couple of those up myself. Yep. So uh, that's growing, guys. That's, that's awesome. And if you're bored or you got toilet time and you want to look at Grip Feet videos, just click the hashtag This Week in Grip, and it'll be able to take you to a whole entire page of endless stream of Grip Feets. And this is uh, it's all about rule number one of Grip Sport, guys. We're able to spread the word about it. The first rule of grip sport is you tell everyone about grip sport. Alan, how's it been going over the last week, my man? Oh, things have been pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, elbows feeling a little better. Still doing a lot of 
Oh, not so much grip specific stuff, but getting a lot of levering type things in. Anything I can do that doesn't doesn't aggravate things. Yeah. So, yeah. But making Smart. some getting some good work. So. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Had a decent week of training myself, I guess. <clears throat> uh, went back to back with Luke, and then he went down to an area gym, probably about forty five minutes away or so, and slammed out four hours of uh, arm wrestling training afterwards. So I haven't talked to him yet, but he's got to be got to be feeling pretty sore. Uh, based on right. the clips that I saw, four hours. Heck, I mean, we hit it for like two and a half just doing grips. So that's like uh, six and a half hours or so. Um, mm-hmm. We're planning a shorter than normal show today because both Alan and I have stuff going on this afternoon. And this should be good news for some of you who have said that the shows are too long. So this will be shorter. You'll be able to get through it. But I wanted to also share something with you guys if you don't know. There's, this is an easy way, a very easy way to make it easier for you to listen to the whole This Week in Grip episode and find where you left off. So if you're on your mobile phone, and I have a Samsung, so if you have, a, if you have an iPhone, it might be a little bit different. But if you go to the YouTube app, down in the bottom right-hand corner on my phone is a library icon. And when you click on that... It'll take you to, oh, a whole bunch of stuff. For, so on mine, I get like the last 10 videos that I listened or that I watched are on a scroll, and I can go, I can swipe to the right, and I can grab the last 10. But if you watched a bunch of videos after the last time you tuned into This Week in Grip, then what you can do is go down and click History, and then that will bring up your a pretty extensive history. I don't know how far back this goes. It looks like it goes back at the very least several days. It may be a week or even more. I, I don't know. But what that ha- what that does is when you click on the video that you wanted to watch again, it brings it up, for me, it brings it up in almost the exact same spot. And I, I listen to, this is very valuable for me because I listen to a lot of uh, wrestling podcasts. My favorite one is Something to Wrestle. And... Uh, some of these are like four or five hours long. So the last thing you want to do is be using that slide thing on YouTube to try to figure out where you left off. It never yeah. it seems to work, and it's always impossible. But when I, <laughs> go from sure. the, <laughs> when I go from the history panel, dude, it brings it up. Usually, I mean, if it's, if it's been uh, only a few minutes, it usually takes me back right to the identical spot where I left off. Sometimes it's a little bit further back. But it's it's really reliable. I don't know if you've tried that at all, Alan. I have, yeah. It seems like, if anything, it maybe backtracks just a couple of seconds, which is actually kind of useful because it kind of brings me back uh, into the frame of mind. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. know what exactly was going on beforehand. So. Yeah, for sure, for okay. sure. Uh, Alan, um, did you see – we got lots of comments last week on the video. Um, and we were talking, dude, about – all of the people that were shot putters in grip, you remember that? Oh, yeah, I did. Well, well, the, that subject came up, and it turns out that's kind of a that's a bit of a thing. Yeah, looks like yeah. there's a number of shot putters in grip. Yeah, um, James so. Rodriguez shared that Jason Otto also a shot putter at the University of Buffalo and former arm wrestler. Um, oh, and he oh, I didn't notice this part. He said he has his own pinch device he's been working on for a few years and hopefully they'll be unveiling it soon so that'll be cool to see and i think there was another one down here that someone mentioned i want to say it was jason steves yeah tim he chimed in with also a throw Ah. from arizona with a huge grip i'm with jet it's their muscle fiber explosive training very strong dudes aaron and the whole arizona crew are all super friendly folks as well makes for Oh, makes for repeat trips. <laughs> that's yeah. funny. Yeah, I'll go along with that one too. Yeah, Tim Struess, That's a that's an older name. Um, I think you mentioned him last week, right, Alan? No, I didn't bring that name up. I just knew that um, Aaron Corcoran was a was a shot putter, and I was just trying to make the connection between some of these guys. It's just interesting seeing the different the different sports, and I don't know so much the the carryover, but some of the backgrounds, because there's a lot of strong similarities when you look at it, you know. Yeah. Like we'd, we'd always made the connections with mountain climbers and arm wrestlers, for example, but then it turns out, you know, now there's a plethora of shot putters. I'd just be curious what other 
what other type of um, activities out there, you know, pe- people are doing because there's bound to be there's bound to be other ones. Yeah, and well, we just don't be cool. we just don't know about them. Maybe if some if if you get time, guys, listen and put put down what your athletic background is here. I know some people that listen have been featured in you know different interviews and 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 different things like on the grip board, uh, you know, all over the place. But it would be cool to see what your background is. So if there's a background that you have that is a you know a, an athletic endeavor, put it down. Or maybe we've got a bunch of you know office folks that never really did anything, but they still ended up with naturally strong hands. So let us know about it. Alan, I uh, I went. I don't know if you remember me talking about this last year, but I went to a career fair over the last week. Uh, it was at my alma mater, Tawanda High School, and you know I go and I say I'm going to talk about like my businesses and stuff, but I don't even bring that up unless people ask me. Instead, I just start handing people grippers. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I had so I have this uh, this set of four grippers that Batter gave me when I went to. Dubai the first time last September and it's like the line of grippers that he carries in his store and they're ah. all marked out in kilograms I think they start out at like it's like 25 35 45 55 or something like that kilograms and I don't teach them any form I let them use chalk if they want to and I'm just looking for like brute strength but basically the fourth one, the heaviest one, I cannot no set. Okay, so it's it's pretty hard. I would say it's like in between an iron mine two and a half and three. And they're a little bit narrower than the normal, but they have pretty good knurling on them. And you know, I can close that fourth one with a set, but I can't no set it. Um, we had three dudes close the third, the level three gripper, which is the red one. And one mm-hmm. guy, man, holy cow, this guy, Ben Miller, from Northeast Bradford High School, he's like, he towers over me. He's got to be at least 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, weighs in the neighborhood of 350 pounds. He's not like, I mean, he's he's like a brick shit house is what he is. He's, he's, a, he's a monster. And he smashed the, the red one, the level three gripper. He absolutely smashed it. I would wow. think, yeah, if there was one that was like uh, an even an even jump between that red one and the black one, I'm sure he would have closed it. it. It just, he totally smashed it. No set whatsoever. I'm not even sure if he had chalk on. Amazing. Yeah. So, it's... <laughs> So did really you haul him crazy. over to the weight room and see him if he could pinch any plates after that, well, yeah, or what? That's what I, I told. Uh, I told my uh, uh, Dawson, the guy that lists with me. He's he also competed at Grip Games in February. I told him, uh, go ahead and see if he wants to come over sometime and maybe he can pull off some other cool feats. He's got really big hands. His hands are easily as long as mine. If it may be just a little bit shorter. Um, he doesn't have the pinky that Ben Hafka has that uh, I trained with the other weekend, uh, and he doesn't have my thumb, but his hands are very long, very thick, extremely thick. They look like uh, not only good gripper hands, but probably also some pretty good potential for thick bar. I think he's, I think maybe he was uh, grew up on a farm or something like that. I think he's like 16. I mean, it just an absolute freak of strength, freak, freak, freak of nature. Wow. Yeah. Nice. How was the scope game? You didn't fire that out on you? No, I, I did bring that out, though. Um, <laughs> at one point, I'm glad you brought that up because it slipped my mind, brother. Uh, I had, like, eight dudes standing around me, and they were all, I, 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 had, I you know, they were all listening to me word for word. We were actually talking about strength training, and I, and I said, hey, you guys want to try some grippers? And they're like, yeah. So I, I, you know, I start handing out grippers. I was like, you're not holding it right. You want to hold it like this. Smash. Got all eight of them all at the same time <laughs> in one scope. <laughs> Just, I mean, I devoured the whole, the whole group. Your kids nowadays don't know what that means. Oh, they knew exactly what it was. Oh, wow. They knew exactly what it was. The problem, however, I, you know, being that I invented the game when I was in first grade and being that I've been doing it for so long, you know, I did have a layoff during like high school where I didn't play that much, but 
you know, being that I've been going so long, I kind of, when someone gets me, I own up to it. And the, the postmaster, the postman at the, at the post office this weekend, yesterday, got me. Got me big time. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, did you drop your pen down behind the scale? And he put his hand down there, and I looked right at it. And I was like, Todd, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and I, and I, did the, I did the thing I always do. I hold my fist up, and I point to each knuckle. I go, T-O-D-D. -D. Because he, it, was, it was even worse. It was even worse, man. I, I credit him with, that's an easy 10-count scope. You know what I mean? I can't overwhelm that. <laughs> and he said that uh, it was it was Jeremy, the guy that works in the back, that told him to get me because we're friends on Facebook. So wait till I see that guy too. I can't be mad at Todd. He didn't even know what that was. But this Jeremy guy, <laughs> his days are numbered. He better sleep with one eye open, bro. Yeah. All right. What else, man? Are you ready to get into some feats, or you got some other cool stuff to tell everybody about in the grip world? No, nothing else. Cool. Say, do you, do you follow uh, Testosterone Nation on Instagram by chance? Not on Instagram, but I do get their emails. What'd you see? Oh, they just had a just a funny post. It said it, it had a picture of a of a donut, and it said something like, "Quick tip: If you eat your donut fast enough, your Fitbit will think you're jogging." <laughs> I thought wait, wait that was good. Hold on a second. <laughs> if you eat your donut fast enough, what? Your Fitbit will think you're jogging. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. That's they post awesome. some of the best stuff on there. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's that's hilarious. That's a good one. Um, hey, before I forget, dude, do you remember anything about a mammoth grip challenge that took place on January 6th in Bowling Green, Kentucky? A mammoth grip challenge? No. Yeah. I just found it on my old uh, note sheet from January. That's where I'm pulling all these feats from. And uh, it was Hercules hold, Rolling Thunder, Silver Bullet hold, Saxon bar, double overhand axle deadlift, and that was it. Um, but I'd never heard a single word about it. I don't know who ran it. It might have been Chad was, Clark. I don't know. It was January. I'm trying to – well, I guess I don't write dates, Yeah. unfortunately, on my stuff so much. Just the – huh, well, that's too bad if that, if that snuck through. Yeah, missed it. I don't know. I have no idea. It might have been like an arm lifting competition. I really don't know. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to say was uh, Jason Gillen is running uh, a contest in June, June 16th. It's called the Columbia River Grip Challenge. So if anybody wants to find out more about that, he's out on the West Coast in uh, Washington, right? Is that right, Alan? Is he in Washington? I, I think so. Washington or Portland, it's one of those. Look him up. It's uh, his name on Facebook is Mako and Dash Jason Gillen. It's a it's a husband wife account, I guess. And uh, he's got lots of information up, and he's posted it in a bunch of groups. So if you're in a bunch of Facebook grip grip groups, and you probably already seen it, but I wanted to make sure to put that out there for him as well. Have you seen that grip tool he made up? The pinch block and hub combo. Oh. Uh, uh, is that the one you he's flip, post, over, flip he's it over, it's got a hub on it or something? Yeah, yep, and the other side, it looks like a, a two-inch pinch block. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. a, that's a really nice little little gadget. Yeah. I, I thought that was just a, I, I haven't picked one up, but I thought it just it just looked awesome, just a clever idea. I, right. I, those combination type things, that's just super handy. Yep, so, for sure. Plus, I'm a, I'm a hub kind of guy, so that's, uh, yeah, that's really neat. Some, something, on the, something on the wish list. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Cool, man. Innovation. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's start running down some feats, dude. I'm going to start. I'll, I'll do the first one. Uh, okay. This is kind of a, a shout-out to Craig Soublier. You know him? He's an arm wrestler with a gigantic beard on Instagram. No. No, I don't. What's his What's his Instagram handle? Couldn't Couldn't tell you right off the bat. I've looked oh, okay. at it a million okay. times, watched like five of his videos today, and still don't know, but... If you look it up, Craig Soublier, S-O-U-B-L-I-E-R-E. -E. Um, earlier this year, he got a 1.9-inch axle, and on the first day lifting on it, he got, like, he got 385 pounds. I mean, this is a seasoned veteran arm wrestler, so uh, he's got a lot of experience training his hands. But holy cow, man, I wasn't expecting to see 385 come up on that first workout. So I don't know where he's at now, but... In January, that's where that's where he started. Nice starting point. That is, that's a that's some solid lifting. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. Say, so, um, you see, yeah. you see Tanner Merkel's uh, uh, COC three silver bullet hold. Uh, I did see it. What did he hit? Like fifty five seconds. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he started off good at something the first time he tried it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I know it. Well, it's funny because this is the – I stepped away from grip for a little while to get back into climbing. Well, then he wound up jacking up his uh, his pinky finger, so he had to come back over to grip. So he was off a – you know, fresh off a little hiatus and comes mm-hmm. back and does that. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, his idea of, of deloading, it, it, it just takes on a whole different – whole different term you know come yeah. back and just start crushing it like that <laughs> so i'll be curious to see what he can get yeah with oh. training with training you mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> right right yeah amazing you gotta love it um here's a freaky feat that i saw uh this was this this i saw this on a lot of instagrams in a short time adam glass included you how let him mock you did a a monkey press, which the monkey press is where you hang off a bar and then press like a kettlebell or a dumbbell or something. Um, oh, yeah. Your hand. And he did 29 kilograms, but on top of that, it was also bottoms up. So oh, I nice. I saw that one or not, but, I mean, dude, like a 24-kilo um, bottoms up press is pretty darn good. And... You know, a 32, I think, is the best I've ever done, but there's absolutely no way I could do it hanging off of a bar. I, I don't even know if I can hang off a bar for, like, five seconds with one arm. That's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've I've seen a lot of that out of Adam Glass. I haven't seen it bottoms up. Mm-hmm. So, but you haul Adam Aki. That guy's got some guns on him. Yeah, he does. <laughs> so, yep. Well, just speaking of hanging from a bar and lifting stuff, you see Adam Glass um, holding 250 on a V-bar, doing a one-arm hang? I don't think I caught that one. I I saw he's he's done a lot of different ones, a lot of different ones for that. Field, yeah. But yeah. That's a ton. And 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 you talk about like hanging body weight for five seconds with one arm. Yeah. <laughs> Plus two fifty. That's just that's just insane. Oh you yeah, know? for sure. I've even yep. seen a hand, at least one or two women doing that kind of feat, where they're hanging from a bar and then holding on to something else. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Didn't we see some some lady? What was it? Did she hang on to like do like a meat hook hang or something like that and lift something? Yep. Oh, I can't remember what it was. It was. I did it, see that. I don't it, know if it was uh, something. I'm not going to be trying, but it was, was awesome it, to see. Was it Steph or Sarah Nordskog or something like that? S Nordskog. Yeah, on, one of those. Maybe? One of those little like ninja warrior type women. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. just. <laughs> rip it up. I don't know where they get that get that ability from. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, hanging from a meat hook, dude. I don't know if I can hang from two meat hooks. Like No. The the the, the discomfort that goes along with it. Yeah. And then yeah. and then to hold something else at the same time. That's just you're you're really you're firing a lot of stuff, but then your your pain threshold must just be absolutely ridiculous. Mhm. Oh. No doubt. Hey, we got to do a quick shout out for our co-host here. Ricardo Magni just got uh, MMO. Did you oh, catch that video wow. on the grip board? Yep, yep. He submitted. I saw he submitted it, and that's what I was going to announce today. And then I saw that it was uh, it was official. It hit a, a 146 uh, uh, number three. So Very nice. Made it look easy. Yep, solid hold. So way to go, Ricardo. One more guy on the list. I don't know if he's intending to uh, start climbing the ladder. Maybe that's on his on his radar. I guess we'll get some some input when he comes back. Yeah, but uh, he's been putting up quite a quite a bit of gripper videos recently. I've seen mostly credit cards that work. Tons of stuff. You know, I was actually hoping he was going to be able to chime in today because I wanted to hear about that that Saturn's ring mm-hmm. implement he was playing with the other day. Those things look pretty. That looks like fun. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't realize that was a five inch ball on the end of that sucker though. <laughs> that's kind of yeah. That's yeah, a that's big. piece. That was in Mighty I, Myth one year when I was injured. It it looks it looks useful. Like there'd be some legit carryover to some other things, maybe with that. You know, like it probably hits all your all the digits. But I don't know. Just kind of wanted to wanted to pick his brain. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Maybe get, get a little uh, get a review out of him on that one. Yeah, for sure. He does a good job with those. Nope. 
Did you see the events were announced for King Kong this year? I did, yes. I've already placed – oh, are we um, – has that been made public? I don't or know. Or was that just to the promoters? You know what? I don't know. It might be just for the promoters, but uh, okay. there's a couple new ones in there. And There was. And I already placed an order for one of the items in question, uh, right. and and then, of course, we're waiting on the other one. Yeah, I don't want to play – I don't want to play dumb, but if they haven't made it, let me just go on the, let me try to get onto the grip board quick, see if that's on there so we can talk in yeah. real time here. Right. We don't want, don't to, want to be doing any spoilers. Like yeah. yeah. Let's see here. I'll just scroll. It'll take me a minute to get this up on. A lot of people are going to be broken hearted when they see the events. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. I know I was. Let's see here. Ah, 2018. International King Kong Challenge. Yep, so it's here. All right, here. fantastic. All right. fantastic. Yep, Why don't you so, tell everybody what the what the events are real quick? All right, so we're going to have the, the flask, one hand pinch deadlift, uh, barrel strength, two and a half inch crusher, which I'm pumped about. The moon yep. top, world of grip. There you go. Never touched one. And then the two and a half inch jug from FBBC, which sounds like nobody's ever touched. Right. So That's brand new, I believe, right? It was There was like a two inch before. And now, yes, they're, and this, now they're coming out with a larger one. Yep, it's in production by the sounds of it, something that should be available come April. So, yeah, so I already placed an order for the moon top, and I'm just waiting for the uh, things to set sail on the jug. So otherwise, I'm signed up. How about you? Yeah, well, what's crazy is, and, and the reason I brought that up is because of the moon top, and it's, you know, it's quite similar to the Saturn's ring or whatever. Okay. Um, you know, not quite similar, but it's somewhat similar. That's what made me think of the of the moon top, but I don't know where I already have a moon top. I don't, I don't know where I got it from. I don't know who I bought it from when it's been sitting there for, I don't know how long it was just one of those things where it seemed like a good price. I didn't have it, ended up getting it. And now I don't need to buy one. It's, uh, I remember it was, it was, uh, it's the first time that I tried that doorknob technique that everybody's doing on like hubs now, which oh, yeah. uh, it's where you like, you angle your hand over, and it like really, really changes the way it's, it's totally different. It's totally different from like a normal grip that I would take, but I saw people doing that and I gave that a try on that. And then I don't know what I got. doesn't matter. But then I kind of shuffled it away, but I did find it again. It's not lost, thankfully, but just crazy that something that I bought is actually going to be in that, in that competition. Yeah. I'm kind of excited to play with it, you know? Now, the it's one down. thing that we didn't hear in that list of events, everybody, and I'm sorry, but there is no stub this year. There is no stub in King Kong. So if you're all about that stub life, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to be about that hub top or uh, moon top life now. That's all there is to it. Well, there's still plenty of time. They might be able to add a fifth event where they do like a stub hold for time or something. Maybe they'll take that under advisement. That, that would be, be cool, one. or maximum repetitions in <laughs> 10 hours. Yeah. Like a 10-hour uh, grip rush would be would be right up my alley. That would be my uh, bread and butter. You know, I tell you, I didn't hate the stub, but it just it just wasn't just wasn't something I'd ever play with. You know, right. I haven't I haven't touched it since then. It yeah. was just I kind of like doing things that that are just that are just fun for me. I, I get that the guys out there like doing it. You know, I know Jerome Bloom lifts a ton of weight on it and it's a, it's a fun event for him. It's just individual per, personal preference, I guess, you know, just not something that, that even those little, those little anvils I see some of these guys make and you see them pulling some stuff on. It's just not my, not my thing. I fall into the wide pinch kind of category yeah. and thick bars kind of where I, where I tend to land. So, but those other things they're they're good in their own right. You know, it's all grip in the end, but just, uh, just a different side of it. Very PC of you there, Alan. Very <laughs> PC. Good job. The next feat I have on my list, Alan, was something that I saw from Mr. Thomas Larson, Mr. Wide Pinch himself. He did 14 double rolling thunder pull-ups, and I just want him to know that I'm coming after him on those because I now have two new style rolling thunders. I have the the former new style and the current new style with the end caps. And I'm having some, some issues with either my triceps or my lats or both and getting significant pain on pull-ups. But 
with the rolling thunders I can go narrower and it does not hurt. So I just want him to know that number 14 is going to fall very soon and be eclipsed. And I just want to nice, have some that, that's, that's a body weight number? I'm sorry? What's that? It was, it was 14 reps uh, with, his, with his body weight, or do you have weight added, or, or what was it specifically? Just I think it was straight just body, body weight? weight. I think okay. Just okay. Body cool. Yeah. Cool. I mean, he's done you some know, impressive uh, body weight plus weight added pull-ups as well. Right. Right. You know, I have the best luck with with rolling thunder pull-ups. If I go thumbless, I can always crank out more. I think I hit like ten or eleven or something like that. That's pretty good. But otherwise, if I do like if 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 I get my thumb involved, it it completely changes my wrist position and. It's yes. just I just get less. I I don't know what it is, but it's it's even more comfortable going thumbless. But it's but it's not legit. It's not like uh, Iron Mind wouldn't accept that. I don't think. I think it's got to be, you know, full on grip. And that's at least my interpretation of the rules. Yeah, I think so. so I think so. But yeah. there's nothing wrong with doing both of them for training purposes. I think, and you can probably uh, I would say probably do you think you could add more weight? You add more weight to your to your body with the thumbless grip. Oh, I would think so. Yeah, yep, yep. I mean, not a, not a ton, but I could probably throw something on there and still knock out. You know, get it down to like triples or something like that. I suppose. Sure. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, well, what else have you seen, Alan? <clears throat> All right. Well, this was a cool one. So that that fellow on the grip board um, goes by Cash Tan. He posted a video. We haven't seen much from this dude in a while, but but Valerie uh, Tol Tolsty. I'm going to go with. Okay. T O L S T Y H. Um, he posted a few um, uh, credit card set uh, 3.5 closes, like mm. he hit it for reps. Wow. And um, it looked like I couldn't tell. He had two solid ones, maybe a third, and went for a fourth, and the fourth stopped him. But I saw two legit closes, and the third one was a little tough to see. It's just those, those videos happen fast, and when you're closing something to that level, your arm's kind of moving around a bit. So I couldn't quite focus in, but but still, nonetheless, you know, this guy was he was on his way up the up the Mash Monster ladder. I think he, I don't know if he got to the three, and he put in a request for the four, and then and then canceled the request, and then hadn't hadn't seen anything from him in a while. Right. Um, so apparently he's still at it, but I, I don't know. He just kind of fell off the fell off the radar for a little bit. Wow. But that's some solid. That's some solid closing, doing it like yeah. that. At, at, I don't know if he's if he's on the captain's crush list or not, but it sure looks like he's a he's a strong candidate for the three, if not the three point five. So yeah, for sure, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how many you said you got like three or four possible repetitions? Like with a was it was it with a swipe every time? Yes, it was. Yes, mm-hmm. and it looked like to me it looked like a very good swipe too. It wasn't one of those kind of questionable ones. Yeah. It was a it was a pause. And he he did a good job of positioning, I thought. That's but I give wrong. him I give him credit for two for sure. He might have got that third, and then the fourth was just it was a it was a miss. But solid work. Yeah, definitely. I also have down here uh, our friend Nick Rosendahl posted a blob in one hand, and then three ten kilo plates in the other for a combo lift during the winter. Um, oh wow. That was at the end of January, which is that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good feat right there, and something something you don't see a lot of blob plus um, a combination of plate pinches, pretty rare. Right, right, nice. Let's see, so you caught you must have caught Bob Sundin's since we're on the subject of plate pinching, his two forty fives transfer. Yeah, dude. If if you wanna if you wanna like narrow down like feet of the week for like the current current week or last week, I mean that that takes the cake right there. That's that's definitely right up there. Yeah. Um, that's that's huge. And he was able. It was it was crazy because it was like he got stronger as he went because he posted those three attempts and the last one looked to be his best one because he got it. And then ceased the momentum and almost looked like he might have like reversed momentum a little bit. It was very, very impressive. I was extremely impressed with that. Yeah, it was. Um, I I almost couldn't tell it if I was if I you know sometimes those videos it's almost like they replay. You know, it's like they're on a loop. Mm-hmm. But he, um, yeah, that was that was awesome. It looked like he was lowering it down and almost almost kind of pulled it back to lockout. So yeah, yeah he uh, he's got quite the knack for. With the plate pension, that's for sure. 
and I would say of the people I've seen do that, he's by far the lightest body weight. Oh yeah, yeah. Boy, he well he had, and this was and this was years back now when he lifted the inch dumbbell and blob in the rain. Mm-hmm. It was like his his body weight was less than the inch bell, if I'm not mistaken. So he yeah. was, yeah. <laughs> I believe you're correct. A lot of a lot of horsepower there. Mm-hmm. Nope. The other thing that I saw just just here it was either this morning or yesterday was Dan Fleming two fingers on the flask PR. I, I didn't write the number down. Uh, I think it was like either 83 or 86 pounds. It was only it was first two fingers and thumb, dude, pulled to legal height. Yep, 86.7 pounds. There you go. Yep, that's very impressive. And that's that is very impressive. <laughs> yes, I, I can't I can't do that with a whole hand. So that's right. uh, <laughs> well, I only got four more, three and a half more pounds at SJ4. So. I mean, that's with the full hand. Yep. So. Yep. Nice stuff. No, he's been he's been hitting it hard lately. Lots of lots of PRs out of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, did, I don't know if you caught. Did you see that for a while there during the winter, James Fuller was pulling the hubs out again and doing some some monster feats with his hubs. I saw him. He got a double forty five pound hub swing. Now, do you know what a, a swing would be in this case, Alan? A double forty-five pound hub swing. Right. So no. There's a there's a there's an old time strongman feat called a a dumbbell swing, which uh, a, that's different from a kettlebell swing. So a kettlebell swing could be anything from the RKC and strong style swing or strong first swing, where the item is swung up to about belly button height. Or you could go like American kettlebell swing where it's taken all the way up over the head, um, like uh, like CrossFit style. But basically with a dumbbell swing, it starts at the, at the ground, you get momentum backwards, and then you take it all the way up over to like a snatch position overhead, but the arm stays straight. You're, you're not bending the arm and oh, bending I've, the I've, body. I yes, I have seen those. Well, yeah. not not necessarily with a hub, but yes, I have seen that. Yep. Yeah. Nice. So, and you'll see like old time strongmen sometimes they'll do like the split, the split stance catch in order to get under it, and things like that. So there's a few different variations of how to do it, but he did it with a um, a 45 pound plate in each hand, and then swung them up overhead, basically with arms straight the whole way. So it's also on an arc. So you've got that momentum that uh what is it centripetal force moving away from you the whole time and you've got to overcome that and then bring it back towards yourself so yeah very very impressive feat that that he put up there oh yeah no i missed that yep would you catch the this is a, a not quite the same feat but um this was something that that james rodriguez posted of scott johnson um he did a he did a hub plate uh he he hubbed a plate and curled it forty five solid solid lift mm. I don't know if you missed that one when was that was that from the thing that they just did yesterday yeah it was uh it looks like it was nineteen hours ago it must have been a, yeah it must have been along those same lines okay yeah I saw something and I wasn't sure who did it but I know that the the hub was it looked like it might have been rubber banded to his hand. He had that he had that much command to it. it was no joke. I, I, I'm reading through some of this, some of his description. He said, right-handed, I was able to lift the Miller Lite, a 152-pound bell with a two and a half inch handle. What a what a great name wow. for a for a dumbbell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it looks like those guys always get together and have a ton of fun. You know, oh my God. a bunch oh my of guys God. getting together and gripping it out. Right. That's right. great. Yeah. That's one of those Good things job. where you you wish it was easier to find someone to film everything, edit it, and then upload it into like a five or ten minute video. Because I'm sure the stuff that goes down in like two, three hours with that crew would be just completely classic. Right. Right. Yeah, they have a lot the of... the feats, but also, also the wisecracks. I mean, the smack talk, all that stuff. It's just got to be historic i'm sure i'm sure i wonder how often they get together 
It's been a little bit you know, they, more frequently recently, I think, because I've seen I've been seeing several videos. I mean, the, one show or two shows ago, we were talking about one of their get get-togethers that they had. Hmm. Nice. Hopefully, they continue doing it because I like watching all those all those clips. Well, I do too. You know, they got their own their own shirts made up. You know, the pickup artists. So it's it's mm-hmm. definitely a you know going to be a long term thing. You know, mm-hmm. but yeah, I didn't know if it was like every once a week or whatever they're. <laughs> What the deal is, but yeah, to get together, you get amped up and start smashing out feats. It looks like they got together and it didn't rain too. So it's, like, it's like they have the most piss poor luck in history because it's always raining every time they get together. So this time it actually well, looked like it was dry. And we usually see the best lifts out of out of Bob Sundin when it is when it is raining. Some yeah, sort Bob of torrential looks like downpour. a cat that got a house cat that got left out in a storm, and then just grip feet start popping up off the ground everywhere. Like, All right, and like, somehow uh, his chalk doesn't get rinsed off of anything. Yeah, yeah. winter <laughs> showers bring Bob some Dean powers. Yeah. Wow, that was pretty good. If they don't capitalize on that, I'm gonna get a new hashtag, T-shirt, ball cap, everything. Hey, speaking of, have you seen the group that is steadily growing out in Hawaii, the Grip Group? No, I, I follow um, that fellow. I think he goes by uh, what is it, Jokabug? Yeah. On Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I follow him. Um, see some of his lifts. He makes some some very nice little blob pendants. Those things are absolutely insane. Yes. And Hammers those that, things out. Did, did you see the Franken blob that he made? I, I did. I did. You you been hitting him up trying to get a hold of that thing? <laughs> or are you going to go down to Hawaii? You probably do for a vacation anyway, aren't you? Yeah, I got to get out of here, man. I got to get some warmer weather. <laughs> I mean, it's 22 degrees out here today, and there's no ice on any ponds. I can't go ice fishing. Uh, man, it's it's heartbreaking. But man, if I could ever get out there, I would love to try that Franken blob. This is, if if people don't know, this was it was just like a billet of steel, wasn't it, Alan? And he pounded on it and shaped it and ground it and turned it into uh, an actual blob-like implement, right? Well, yeah, I was under the impression that that was literally done with, with just a, just a hammer. You know, I didn't think he'd he'd whipped out any other machinery. I thought he may just have, pounded it into may have machine. just yeah. been a, a hammer. You may be right. Oh, so, yep. Can you imagine? That guy must have some like some crazy guns on himself too. I mean, to be able to to beat on a piece of steel like that and turn it into it, that's like some old school, you know, blacksmith action. Yeah, going on. yeah, man, like modern day blacksmith. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. But that 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 that'd be neat to see, you know, a, a one-off Franken blob. Mm-hmm. I I hope he. I didn't catch if he put it any like uh, dimensions out or anything on it. But the weight was unreal, wasn't it? In yeah. the sixties or something, it was some monstrous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, cool. I, I wonder how smooth it is. You know, if it if it kept some of the classic dimpling or or what you know because it's you know obviously when you're hammering on it it's hard to get all of those imperfections out right so i didn't see a lot of close-ups but yeah it does a lot of nice stuff mm-hmm. for sure it would be awesome to give it a try he's got an inch dumbbell coming his way too he ordered a an inch dumbbell off the site that'll be that'll it should be getting there pretty soon i know that uh the shipping got all covered and he was it was going to go to Man, I forget what it was called, but basically there's a freight company that holds on to stuff, and you go pick it up over there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we had to make sure that it was going to the proper island and all that stuff because Hawaii's got, like, what, six or seven islands or or three or four or something. I don't know. But he's on one island, and it's just easier if it gets shipped right to his island and stuff like that. So we ironed all those details out for him and should be getting there soon. So you guys will be able to feast on that as well. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, somebody's going to pick that thing up and say, oh, screw this, it's staying here. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a lot of weight to be moving around yeah. <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. Um, well, so, another one, right at the beginning of February that I saw, uh, we haven't spoken about Andrew Dube today, and he put one up that was pretty cool, man. He Another hanging feat. He was hanging with one hand and then juggling two balls in the other hand. And, you know, they were, he wasn't, you know, he was actually juggling a couple of spheres in his other hand. Literally juggling? You're, you're not juggling. talking like shot rotations. You're talking no, no, like. No. Juggling. Oh. Juggling. 
Yes. Nice. Yes. So huh, you got the endurance factor way. of hanging long enough to do that, plus the, you know, there's... Coordination. Yeah, coordination with both hands, plus you've got, like, the agitation going on through your body because you've got that force going to keep on moving your off hand. So, that I mean, some of these feats are probably not, you know, the actual strength requirement does not seem that crazy, but when you when you're piecing all of these like intricate details together, it really becomes oh. extraordinary. I mean, you can't just walk <laughs> up and start doing that kind of stuff. There's a lot of skill well, involved. Yeah, and I have a you know from the I guess from the anatomical standpoint, when you see people doing like these one arm hangs, that is an extreme load. Just body weight in itself mm-hmm. is an extreme load on a lot of the connective tissues. You've got a lot of other things firing that don't normally have to do that. And then when you're talking about picking up weights and pressing weights and juggling, anything like that, that is, that is a lot. That is a lot on the body, a lot on the grip, a lot on the shoulder. That's a, that's a, that, that, that in itself is a feat of strength that a lot of people don't realize. If you ever try just doing a one-arm hang, that's, a, <laughs> that's, that's, not, not, that's not an easy thing by any means. That actually, like, that, that really aggravates parts of me when I've tried that before. I just... So I don't even mess with it. <laughs> well, especially now with the all the stuff you're dealing with with that that one shoulder. I mean, yeah. you have to go yep. to the the other arm in order to even give it a try. Yep, yep. So that'll be off the list. <laughs> yeah, you might want to stay away from that one, bro. Go ahead and yep. juggle a couple of your hex block weights, and then yeah, <laughs> you know, don't worry about the hang. Yep. Uh. Hey, you know, I put up a post on Facebook right around the time of the Arnold to see if there were any, like, grip challenges going on, and a bunch of people said, like, that they didn't see any, or, you know, maybe they passed them, I don't know, but did you see this uh, this Viking uh, grip challenge that actually took place on the main stage? Did you see any of that, buddy? No, I didn't. Okay, so, like, I had never heard of this company, but... This Vikan Performance Chalk, V-I-K-N, all, all capital, V-I-K-N. Um, the first thing that I saw was Ryan Pitts doing a 70-kilogram hold in each hand, kettlebell in each hand. He did it for a minute and 18 seconds. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. No one, no one really talked about that. But then I saw, and I didn't capture it for my notes, so i got to kind of go by memory, but... If you if you search for that, there's one in, where there's a woman holding the kettlebells. I don't know how long she got it for, but it's up on the main stage. Like at some point, they must have had that going on up on the main stage, and it was just it was just a hold for time with I'm assuming those 70 kilogram kettlebells. It was kind of like the it was kind of like the fundraiser that took place a few weeks back where. Uh, Gil asked people to try to predict what kind of hold he could get with, I think, 100 oh, yes. kettlebells. It was very, yep. very similar. Very, very similar. They just pick them and hold them. Uh, you know, they took them off blocks. It looked like they might have been rubber blocks or something like that. Yeah. So there, there was some grip stuff going on on the main stage, and I didn't hear anything about it here until like the last uh, during this last week. Yeah, no, I didn't hear anything about that at all. Interesting. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. And then uh, mm-hmm. the one thing, one last thing, Alan, and then if you got any more, you can jump in. But I heard the coolest story, man. I think I think this is this is cool. Now some people will think probably think this is dumb. Okay, but uh, there was this guy, this wrestler back in the eighties and early nineties. Uh, I guess even into the mid '90s, it was Ravishing Rick Rude. You familiar with this guy? Yes, I, I I remember that name. Okay, so this is the guy that had like the Chippendales body, like ultra lean, rugged six pack, and he would do like the hip gyrations and stuff like that. And his gimmick was he would call, he would have women come up into the ring, and he would give them the Rude Awakening, which was a kiss on the lips. <laughs> And then, you know, they'd, like, pass out sometimes, you know. <laughs> how? The, I mean, I don't know what the screening process was for, like, uh, uh, lip herpes or whatever, but I guess 
they figured that out. He had a mustache, so maybe that like blocks the herpes. I don't know. <laughs> I was expecting anyway. something different with the rude awakening here. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember the performance part, but okay. Right. <laughs> right. So he's he's well known for his grip strength. So he's he's since passed away from potentially questionable circumstances. But anyway, I have this book called uh, Tributes, and what it is is by a guy named Dave Meltzer. It talks about several well-known wrestlers that have passed away, just talks about their career and stuff like this. This guy was like a national champion or world champion in arm wrestling in like the either the late 70s or early 80s. And I did a post on him several years ago called Could Rick Rude Have Closed the Number Four Gripper? And I, uh, I kind of pulled some of the stuff that he was known for out of this tributes book as well as other other things that I had heard from shoot interviews from other wrestlers. And that was pretty cool. But then I heard uh, on one of these podcasts, Something to Wrestle, where Bruce Pritchard, who used to be like a behind-the-scenes guy for WWE, he also played Brother Love, stuff like that. He was talking about Rick Rude. So in, in one of the last little... Uh, feuds that he had in the WWF. He was going up against the Ultimate Warrior for the World Championship, and they shot these vignettes where it was kind of like Rocky-style training. He was working on a speed bag. He was sprinting out on the beach. Um, he was doing, you know, bench press. He's all sweaty and stuff. You can tell he's working hard. There's this one where he's in, like, a gymnasium, like a, a gymnastics-style gymnasium, and he climbs... To you know, you know how they hang the rope from the ceiling, and then you climb up the rope, like in oh, yeah. gym class and stuff. Well, he climbed up the rope on a thick rope. It was probably inch and a half rope. Climbed all the way to the top with no legs. Oh wow! And this is legit. Like like no cables, no like uh, balancing cable or anything that they had, you know, covered up or anything. It was legit. And here's why I'm sharing this. The, the film crew for WWF at that time was notorious for missing the shot, meaning they had to make Rick Rude climb up this ladder at probably, you know, 220 pounds or so, 100, 100 kilos, climb all the way up to the top of the thing. He had to do it multiple times, and it was no problem for him. He never bitched, he never complained. He just did it over and over and over until they got the shot. Now, I... I know damn well there is no way, no no way that I can climb to the top of a rope, let's say 20 foot. There's no way that I can do that one time without my feet. I don't know about yeah, you, right. maybe you can. No, I'd have okay. to, I have to lock my feet. That's the only way I've ever known to do that. Right, yeah. right. Well, he did it with no, with no feet multiple times until they finally got the shot. And I, that, was just, that just blew my mind. But it goes right along with everything that I had read about the guy and that post that I put up, and I have to wonder what he could have done with a with a gripper if someone would have shown him what to do. You know what I mean? It's just, it's unbelievable. This could be one of the guys with the strongest hands in the world, pound for pound, that could have just dominated a gripper. You know, I, anytime that those guys that are running podcasts and wrestling ask for questions, I always ask, what kind of feats of hand strength have you seen? Um, and... Uh, I, I just wonder if he ever closed grippers or anything like that because he was definitely alive when grippers were out. Because I mean, didn't Richard Soren close the three in 1991? I think, I think so. I can't yeah. remember. I don't remember exactly, but but yeah, yeah. it's definitely been around a while. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Well, yeah, that's some that's some crazy impressive, impressive strength. Yeah, I'm sure there's yeah. people that are listening that can do that no problem. I mean, lots of people have a much better uh, body weight to grip strength ratio than me. They're probably climbing up ropes all the time. And they don't even think anything of it. But this was pretty pretty impressive. Well, that, yeah, because that's like, you know, when I think of, that's like Ninja Warrior almost type of stuff. Sure. You know, when yeah. I think of people doing that, they're generally they're generally not along that, they're not that size at all. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're small to, to mid-size at best. They're not, you know, like a heavyweight doing yeah. something like that. So, right. so that's that's impressive. Cool. Yeah, man, for sure. I wish there was more <laughs> stuff out there like that, but I'm always listening, always reading. 
And that's yeah. it for me, Alan. I know I, I got to head out. If you got anything else that you want to cover, you go ahead. Otherwise, the show is yours, dude. Just just one quick mention. Um, John McCarter has has reannounced the Missouri Grip Challenge, uh, uh, Volume Two coming up. Um, back in back in action, uh, August fourth of of this year. Um, the announcement was made on the grip board. I think he might have even thrown something out on Facebook, but there's there's more information out there just so that's on everybody's radar. I don't want these competitions getting overlooked. So right. other sure. than that, I guess, yep, that, that about wraps me up. So all right. Well that's episode forty eight of this week in grip. Um, we'll be back next week with another one. Make sure you guys like, share and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you then.